So, we will look at the sigmoid nonlinear uh, activation now. So, here, here is the analytical expression for the sigmoid nonlinear activation okay, and this is the plot of the function. You can see that, so this axis is the x axis and the y axis is sigma of x. Okay. So, we can see that for large value of x, the uh, sigmoid function tends to 1 again for large value positive values of x and for large negative values of x again it turns to 0. Uh, thing to note is that it, it becomes flat for large values of x as well as large positive values of x as well as for large negative values of x. So, um, in this uh, in these slides I have used x, but typically the input the uh, input to the nonlinearity is your z which is summation w i x i. For there is a uh, <coughs> w0 which is a bias term also coming in which I have not included in the summation, but z is what is typically used. So, you can also rewrite this as sigma z, this is just so that you do not confuse get confused when you see us using z in a later lecture sometime. So, the input to the uh, sigmoid function you might know already is the uh, linear combination of your input features with the weights. Okay. So, what this says is that if z is very large that is summation w x i is very large then uh, either uh, uh, magnitude of that. So, very uh, large positive as well as very large negative numbers w i x i summation would uh, lead to the sigmoid function being saturated. Now, what does that mean which means that the uh, gradient or in this case you will just do d sigma of z by delta z will be close to 0 very small number. Okay. So, uh, this means that if you have, uh, and if you of course attended the back propagation lecture, you will see that this leads to uh, negligible or zero updates to your weights. So, the learning basically quote unquote learning will stop. So, the weights would not be updated as frequently and they would not change as dynamically as you expect them to be. So, this is one of the problems with the sigmoid function. Um, so, that, that this is one of the biggest, but this, of course, this has many other advantages. Um, one of them is that suppose your output layer you, are, you want to interpret it as a probability score then uh, this would be the optimal thing to use because the uh, inputs or outputs are between the value 0 and 1. So, this is also known as the squashing, squashing function because it squashes your output in the range 0 to 1. Okay. The next function that you are looking, look, going to look at is the tan hyperbolic which is very similar features except for the range of the output. The tan hyperbolic function is again one of the um, um, uh, activation functions that are often used, it is one of the earliest uh, uh, functions to be used. In the here the range of this function is between minus 1 and 1 and here too again saturation problems exist and um, it acts like an identity in the sense uh, it is linear identity near the origin unlike the sigmoid function. So, again this is also preferred for certain type of problems and the saturation problems here again means that the gradient with respect to the uh, argument uh, input argument goes to. Uh, 0, so which means that you know weights will not get updated. This is again the most effective the ReLU or the linear uh, um, rectified linear unit uh, as it is known as it is it is one of the more effective cost functions and it has been used widely in uh, computer vision problems um, very successful in computer vision problems. And so, this is one of the preferred uh, loss functions uh, for many of the modern uh, networks architectures that are out there. Again, it is very simple that uh, if for all values greater than a 0, uh, it, it just uh, gives the same value that is basically it is uh, its identity for all values of x greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0 and for anything uh, of uh, for any input less than or equal to 0, the output is 0. Here um, the problem is that very for very small values of the input then the gradient will be um, the f of the function value will be very small. So, that is that is one other uh, it is one of the drawbacks and for negative values again the gradient will go to 0 right. So, that is the uh, because the f of x is 0. So, the gradient of f of x with respect to x if x is negative there will also be 0. So, then the updates would not be uh, done to the weights. So, this is the, uh, the problem with ReLU, but otherwise this is a, a very uh, effective cross function. Again you note that this is actually a non-linear function in the sense that it, it exists only for uh, values of the input greater than 0 and 
in its 0 for all values of x greater than uh, less than or equal. So, um, the leaky ReLU was to again um, uh, was to take care of some of the problems that uh, that ReLU had since that for it gives you a small gradient value for negative values of the input right. So, if um, so in the previous uh, slide we saw that when uh, for just a plain ReLU or the rectified linear unit if the input was negative then your gradient also goes to 0, but in this case having it in this form. So, for all negative values of x it, it, will, it will give you a scaled uh, value of that input. So, which means that the gradient can exist ok. Um, another version of this is the parametric rectifier uh, uh, rectified linear unit wherein instead of having a fixed scaling factor for x for negative values of x we have an alpha which is again a parameter which is learned during the back propagation process ok. Uh, and yet another uh, variation of this is the exponential linear unit which again for uh, negative values of x takes this form. Um, this is to make sure that the, uh, the average activation in a layer goes to 0. So, again this has uh, a uh, gradient for negative values of x also ok. So, these are the typical uh, activation functions that are uh, used in a network. You can um, for instance I have not I think uh, shown here the actual analytical form for hyper tan hyperbolic x you can look that up and convince yourself uh, that the plot looks this way. So, um, you can see that the problems with, uh, with sigma and tan h are basically the saturation here. On the other hand they are very convenient uh, in the sense that the outputs are squashed between minus 1 to 1 or 0 to 1. So, for sigma it is 0 to 1. So, that again if you are uh, let us say, so if you look at sigmoid, so let us say if you want the output layer to be a probability to be interpreted as a probability score then maybe uh, add the output layer then something like sigmoid function would be an appropriate non-linearity. Sigmoid, uh, sigmoid um, tan hyperbolic and ReLU are the most often used and the most uh, effective uh, activation functions uh, that are used in artificial neural networks, um, all flavors of artificial neural networks. Mm -hmm.